Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back here to my channel where I play Planet Zoo. My name is Nisse and today we're gonna make our first uh, habitat for this underwater viewing we made the other day. Uh, first we're just gonna uh, edit it a tiny bit because I didn't notice when I did this wall part around here um, that it was kind of putting a wall in the middle of the viewing area so i just twisted it so it fits that the um what's it called walls will be kind of where the bridges are so it don't uh, ruin the view um but today we're gonna make a double habitat for the asian small cloud order and the eurasian order um two small orders roughly the same size so i will uh, not go through them individually today. I want to make them side by side for comparisons Just to make this clear for the beginning. It is the Eurasian Other it's not a European other. I know it also live in Europe, but it is basically Eurasian which means the amount of uh, the what's it called? the giant island where both Asia and uh, Europe are on that's Eurasia um, I know I, I was confused about it at first so I just want to make sure that anybody else aren't as you can see we start with the house here for them and we make it a double house so we already made the house for the nest animal we're gonna put in here uh, on the other side of the house here uh, in the middle here we want to make a um, cage so you can separate them and you can for instance if someone is sick because the guests will be able to look into the habitats here and we don't want to look them to look at the sick ones it can also be because we have a new one so it can get used to the others before we actually release it into the group all my information today is from animalia.bio and uh, I will link both for the Asian small cloud order but also for the aviation order down below so you can go read for yourself if you don't believe me or if you just want to get more information I can of course mention it all. I am aware that in the game here the others looks roughly the same size but be aware that the Asian small cloud order is the smallest other in the world and only weigh around one kilo that would be around two pounds. It do however grow to a length of 45 to 61 centimeters that would be around 17 to 24 inches where the Eurasian small cloud order weighs 7 to 12 kilos which is a lot more uh, that would be uh, roughly 14 to 24 pounds and then you would think that it's much longer than the Asian small cloud order but it's actually it is longer but not that much it grows to a length of 57 to 95 centimeters which is roughly 22 to 37 uh, inches they do both live both in Asia and Europe but the Eurasian order also live in Africa however the Eurasian order is much more spread up north where the uh, Asian small cloud order is mostly in the southeast and East Asia however they have been introduced in the United Kingdom be aware at this point that we used a one-way glass both in the underwater viewing gallery but also up here so guests will be able to see into the house but they won't be able to disturb the others so they have this safe place where they can hide even though others aren't the most shy animals especially uh, those who have been raised in captivity they are very cute and very attention seeking kind of like children and then of course we do use the same exact design that we did here on the main building to pull pull this entire build in together to make it feel like more cohesive where if we did a completely different roof or different wall or, or something over here then it would uh, kind of give the appearance that it was two different habitats and they are not so therefore very important to 
keep that cohesiveness. And once again, even though they live roughly the same places, the two others, the Bimes, are actually different. One thing that is cohesive between them is that they need a lot of water that could be coastal, that could be uh, fresh water, that can be marine, wetlands, uh, rivers, lakes, so on. Uh, they can both live in fresh and uh, salt water. But that's all, so where they split apart the two others since the Asian small cloud order do prefer more south in the tropical forest or a normal forest grassland scrubland mangroves um, where the Eurasian other do prefer the taiga timber uh, tundra sorry uh, but also still grassland forest uh, uh, scrubland so they have some overlapping areas but they also uh, have some individually, especially because the Eurasian order is much more all over the place where the Asian small cloud order is very specific with what he wants. The Asian small cloud order of course have its names because of the small claws. I actually thought it was because it was the smallest order, therefore smaller paws, therefore smaller claws. But it's even more than that because the claws is actually way smaller compared to the feet or the toes than other others. Uh, Asian small claw others count not on the strength of the claws to find food, but uh, for the fine feeling in their toes or fingers or what we're gonna call them, they do use their paws as hands so therefore they count much more of being able to use their fingers than their claws uh, again very small claws <laughs> uh, therefore they also have much less webbing between the uh, feet or fingers uh, as other others the aeration other of course have its name for from where it originated or originally lived um, but it is also the other who is spread most uh, over most of the world uh, and therefore the population size is actually also unknown because it's hard to collect data from such a big area. One thing though that or a few things that are uh, completely the same with others overall is the brownish fur then the drawings or colorations besides that can differ from species to species but then they have the short legs the webbed feet again the asian small cloud order has less webbed feet but it is still webbed and then they have this a uh, special talent for closing their nose holes and ears when they dive so they don't get water in it and their short fur are actually made to collect air bubbles closest to the skin. So the upper layer of the fur will become wet, wet sorry. Um, but it beneath that, uh, in uh, as close as the skin as possible, they will collect bubbles of air, which will isolate the others, so they can di dive into very cold water also. Now, building the underwater area needs a lot of light, not necessarily r lights that you put down there, but lighter stuff to put down there. Because as you saw earlier when the other dive, they was kind of in a blur with the dark background. So here I make some stones which are kind of the same tone as the ones we use above water, but they are lighter so they will bring in more light uh, automatically down here. Besides that, of course, we are going to put in a lot of corals. They will come in in a minute and the dirt down here will be completely covered, both the walls down here, but also the bottom down here to make sure we have as much light as possible to uh, kind of counter that muddy uh, feeling. We will also change the waters for tropical water which are so much easier to see through um, which again will give us so much a better look at the others down here when they swim. Another little difference between the 
Asian small clot otter and the European or Eurasian otter is the uh, lifespan since the Asian small clot otter only live for 11 to 16 years, where the European or Eurasian uh, otter live for 22. On average, of course, some will become older, some will not uh, become that old at all. Um, that's like humans, some of us live for a long time and some of us sadly don't. Now, I know we look at the difference between Asian small cloud otter and the Eurasian otter. However, there are actually, when it comes to lifestyle, a difference between uh, uh, Asian small cloud otters because some of them live as far away from human as possible um, to, uh, since they are very shy and they are active during the day so they want to be in peace and just be able to uh, play around and groom their fur and uh, catch their food on their own without being disturbed. Uh, however, other groups of them are actually living purposely close to humans and have adopted uh, some kind of behaviors which you can uh, mirror humans to kind of attract their attentions because maybe they're gonna feed you. Kind of if you have a vacation area, we all know when we uh, go on vacation then these cats, if someone have lived in that vacation home before you and feed the, feed it the wild cats in the areas, then you never get rid of them. Uh, and it's kind of the same with these others. However, the uh, Eurasian other is actually much more active at dusk and at night. Uh, so they can kind of go around on their own again, uh, groom themselves, feed, uh, whatever they need to do. Um, the Asian small claw other is much more uh, social and therefore their group size actually are one of the biggest among others and normally grows to numbers around 12 or 20 individuals keep in mind that others do live with one mating parent pairs uh, and the rest will be their young uh, st still of course some of them will be adult but it's young adult before they go out and find a mate on their own and it seems like I missed the point where I used a blueprint here. It's Cece's aquatic plant uh, pack and it will be linked below. It's not a mud, it is a... Um, what's it called? A uh, blueprint from the workshop. Uh, so you don't need any... Um, what's it? Sorry, I just can't words today apparently. Uh, you don't need any much or anything like that. Um, maybe you need a uh, DLC, uh, but if you have it, all of the DLCs, then no issue there. And you, when you go to the workshop, uh, the people who put things up for the workshop will tell you if you need anything uh, up there. Going a little back to talk about the grooming of the others. All otters groom themselves a lot and it's actually they do it while the fur is a little wet and the thing they do is actually pull out in it so air can get through the wet fur and here and that's how it actually get in and make that isolating uh, bubble area closest to the skin if they don't groom themselves then they will uh, not be able to take the cold keeping in mind that even though others do live hot places the water can be fairly cold uh, the temperature of water are affected out of a few things uh, one thing is how deep it is another part is uh, if it's moving or not or where it comes from some of these rivers can be very very cold if the water is moving quite fast and comes from a very deep water source and especially when they look for food, they normally try to dive to the bottom to find something. They don't only pick it up um, from uh, the higher levels. Of course, they do also eat fish, which will swim so it's not on the bottom, but they, that's not at the top of the water either. However, keep in mind that they do eat a lot of shellfish and uh, other kinds of... Uh, creatures from the bottom 
of the water and therefore they will need to dive quite a long way down. But once again here we have a little bit of a difference since the Asian small cloud otter is still a carnivore so it does eat crabs, shellfish and crayfish um, but they also eat frogs which they can catch on land. However the Eurasian otter uh, eats a lot more different things since it is also bigger so it needs more energy compared with how much energy they use. They eat fish, amphibians, uh, other aquatic prey, uh, but they can also eat birds, eggs, insects, worms, uh, and small amounts of vegetation. So they can eat some plants, but the base of the food source need to be uh, pro pro protein. Sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce that in English. So it needs to be meat or fish or something like that. Now for the toys in here, we give, went all out. We know a lot of the kids of our benefactors here in Future Life Asia love these small playful creatures. Uh, so therefore we wanted to show them off in the best possible way. Uh, of course, we hope that uh, the kids can motivate their parents to maybe throw an extra dollar or two our way. Um, and once again, the playful nature of the others is actually what keeps them alive in the wild. Uh, both the fact that uh, they're too, too cute to kill, um, but also the fact that it's how they bond in their family group. Uh, and if they don't have this family group, then they won't pro possibly survive on their own. Uh, it's sad but true. Breeding-wise, there are actually a few differences between the others also. Um, they can breed year-round, that's for both of them, and they are monogamous, again, for both of them. But uh, the, uh, the duration of the pregnancy is actually a tiny bit different, where the Asian small claw otter is pregnant for 60 days, uh, a eration a small plot other can also be pregnant for 60 days, but it can also take a bit longer, up to 70 days. So there's kind of a little bit of a span there. Uh, they both get birth to a group of pups, uh, but the Asian small plot other get between one and six. So that can change a lot where the Eurasian small plot other give birth to two or three. So a smaller span, but they, uh, but more narrow, if we can say it that way. Uh, they are also independent as uh, different ages, where the Asian small crowd other uh, will be independent if the 14 weeks, which is three and a half months roughly, uh, where the Eurasian small, uh, sorry, the Eurasian other will be independent uh, after only three months, so two weeks earlier. Um, but otherwise, it is basically the same. Where the mother will have a specific nesting burrow that she has uh, for herself and uh, the small pups when they come, uh, and, uh, which will be in kind of a muddy river bank, uh, where after, of course, she will join the family in their... Uh, burrow when uh, they get bigger. Of course, this burrow is just not a basic burrow with one room. It is more of a system burrow, if we can say it that way. For both others, the issue of uh, humans' destruction of their homes are a big issue. Uh, mainly wetlands areas they are being drained to make room for uh, agricultural purposes or basic um, infrastructure. Sorry, I know I didn't pronounce that right. When we go into specific, the Asian small clod other have the issues of population fragmentation, which I know we have talked about before here, uh, but it can give quite a few issues. Uh, one being that since there are so such a long way to the nearest uh, group or other group, especially because they live these two very different places, some of them chose to live 
away from humans and be shy and some of them live very close to humans they don't really meet each other and therefore over time they will start to interbreed and we all know a lot of issues that has come with that uh, besides that, also the Asian small clawed otter have actually also been hunted over time uh, because their furry have this very um, uh, velvet-like uh, structure which is very nice actually, um, so that's also an issue for them. For the Eurasian other, it has two other very big issues. One of them is the ones that choose to live in coastal areas uh, are very prone to be affected by oil spills. Not only that the oil is bad for the water they live in, but we have all seen pictures of penguins, birds, uh, tortoises that uh, are completely covered with oil from these oil spills and that can also uh, hit the uh, others of course and then because then you would think then they should stay at the rivers and be there instead so they don't get hurt by the oil uh, spills uh, but if you choose to live in a river as an other instead then you can sadly be uh, affected by the fishing industry in lakes since uh, humans that live in the area also need to eat uh, and there are only limited numbers of fish therefore overfishing can really also affect the others at this point the asian small clawed otter is listed as vulnerable um, so it's not the worst in the world but still it can go right, very wrong very fast since there are only around 5,000 left in the wild and if they start into breeding with each other and they still get hunted then the number of offspring will fast decline and uh, hurt the population overall. The Eurasian other is only listed as near threatened at this point and since they are living so many places it is uh, unrealistic that they would just disappear overnight as some other species might do. However, we need to remember a very important thing here. Uh, e even though we have a lot of them out there, they live a lot of places. So maybe they don't disappear overall overnight, but it doesn't mean that they don't uh, disappear from individual places over time. Overall, these two beautiful others aren't really that uh, threatened that they should actually belong here in Future Life Asia. But the thing is that we also need to keep all of our benefactors happy. And as I said earlier, others are an easy way to do that. But it seems like it's time for the cinematic, so I hope you enjoy and I will be back afterwards.
okay everyone it seems like we are at the end now i really hope you enjoyed it uh, i do think i'm gonna leave up another video today so we don't get behind on all of the uh, i'd like to have these videos follow the mud videos and we got a lot of mud we're gonna use this week uh, so i do think uh, there will be another video up only two hours after these remember i put uh, speed builds up wednesday and saturday and monday tuesday thursday and friday is for mods so uh, yeah i just wanted to remind people that uh, and thank you so much we're up to 30 subscribers at this point and it's amazing i didn't even want to dream about that before but uh, this yeah third thursday friday saturday this week I just got four more and it's amazing. So thank you so much. You know the drill. Like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you know the next time I upload a video. I really hope to see you again at the end of the below or in the next video. Bye guys.